I can't believe I'm actually sitting down and filming. It has been weeks. Um, hi, guys. I have so much to talk about in this video. Okay, I'm just gonna preface this video with it's going to be so long <laughs> because I have so much to say. It's probably gonna be very jumbled all over the place. Maybe confusing, maybe, I don't know. I just wanted to preface this with saying like, this is gonna be all of the thoughts that I've had over the last few weeks compiled really messily into one video. So just bear with me. A lot of times I start a topic and then veer off into another and then forget and then try to find my way back to that topic. So I'm gonna not worry about it. I can't worry. I can't be concerned about how this video is gonna come out. I'm just going to like unload everything that I've been feeling over the last few weeks. And maybe some of you can relate, maybe some of you can't. So let's get started. So maybe you didn't even notice, maybe you did, but I have taken a two week break from YouTube. On YouTube, the way that things work is that you, you hope to grow. You always do. You hope for growth. You hope that on this platform, people will watch and people will find what you have to say helpful or interesting or funny or all those things. So that's always the goal with YouTube. You wanna grow, you want more opportunities. That's what it is. I think that that's not even just that way with YouTube. It's that way with life. You want to continue further progressing. You want the opportunities to grow in whatever field you're in. It's comfortable, you can stay where you are, but most people always look for more and further growth and all that kind of stuff. Same goes for YouTube, of course. I am on this platform and you're always looking like more subscribers, you know, things like that. That's all incredible. When I started this channel out, it started off as a hobby. I enjoyed it very much. I still worked a very full-time job for many, many, many years while doing this. Still did it all the time because it, it was it was just a hobby. And you know what? In, in the beginning of doing this hobby, I, of course, dreamed that one day it could be my full-time job. But I, I kept in the back of my mind that, hey, maybe that won't be a possibility. But if it is, it would be in the long-term future. One day that did become a possibility and I was able to make YouTube my full-time job. And what a dream job. It is being able to stay home, being able to work, you know, doing creative things in the creative field, being able to have a connection with people that I would normal, normally never meet in any other avenue of my life, being able to put on makeup for fun, but also make a living off of it and be able to work with incredible brands and have like amazing opportunities and at times get to travel. All of those things I still hold true that are incredible, incredible things that I will never take for granted. Over the years of YouTube, and with growth and the way that things just work, new opportunities start arising and that that's what was happening. And it's incredible because again, I could have only ever dreamed that that be the case. I never thought that you could get like creatively burnt out really. Cause like how, it's so fun, it's so cool. You love creating. What happened with me is that the opportunities started coming in. And when you start getting really cool opportunities, you want them to keep on and you want that not to stop and you want to continue growing but also it's a lot of pressure at times because as a human being like I'm just a regular person I'm not like some special person I just do the same thing that a lot of people do I just happened to make YouTube videos and it just ended up working out really well to be able to be a full-time gig for me which is like every day I look at my life and I'm like what what it is so cool and so crazy. And so new opportunities are coming in and you know, of course that's an incredible thing and that's what you wait forever for. But what you don't realize is the amount of pressure that at least me, all I can talk for is myself, that I put on myself. The amount of pressure I put on myself as a human being is, it's so unhealthy. I don't know why I do that. I'm, I'm a perfectionist with everything, but I also, am my own worst enemy. I've talked about this many times on my YouTube channel. If you're a new follower, you may not know. Hi, my name is Christy and I am a serial procrastinator. But with serial procrastination still comes perfectionism. So when you combine the two, you are left with a lot of anxiety surrounding everything. Because when you want everything to be perfect, but you're a wait till the last minute type of bitch, things don't really work that way. What happens to me? I get really stressed out. And a couple of weeks ago, I had a break, okay? Because for the longest time, I couldn't understand why people would get burnt out. But for me, I was doing, I was creating a recipe for burnout and I didn't even realize it by waiting till the last minute to do things because I was so overthinking them to the point of getting to a point where I, the thought of doing things would cause me to 
hype this whole thing up in my head and I didn't want to do it and I don't want to <laughs> and then when I would do it I would wait till last minute and then I would want it to be perfect and then it would be this big stressful thing and I have I have talked about this for a long time so I know I told you guys this video is going to be all over the place but just please bear with me I've always been like this it's not just since starting YouTube it's been always and it takes a very conscious effort for me not to push things off until I want to do them or till it feels right because Instead of doing things just now, like, okay, you don't have a choice. You have to get up and do X, Y, Z. I hype it up in my head until it becomes this n near impossible task for me to want to start. And a lot of the times it's not even, it's, it's a non-issue. Like it was perfectly fine had I just started it when, even if I didn't feel like doing it or even if, I don't know, I, I let it get overwhelming for some reason. I don't know why I'm like that. I, I don't know why I do that. I overthink everything, everything. And I'm talking like to a detrimental point where if something's going to happen, if I'm like, say I'm going to put an offer in on a house, initially I'll be excited about it, but then I will go over every possible scenario that could go wrong. Instead of ever thinking about what could go right, I always drive everything into the ground. So like, I remember the first time that I went to Generation Beauty. I've talked about this before. This might be repetitive for some of you, but it's all encircling into what's been going on these last couple of weeks with me. So I remember the first time that I wanted to go to Generation Beauty. I literally made it in my own mind like it was going to be horrific. Like I was going to be alone the entire time. Everybody hated me. It was going to be such a weird, awkward experience. What if, what, what's going to happen? What if I die on the plane right there? What if I... I literally what if the entire scenario completely out of thin air. And I want you to know that I do that with everything. So if, if something good is happening to me, I'll what if it into a bad scenario. Almost always, and I really do mean that, almost always the bad scenario that I had created for myself never happens. And I think it's like a self preservation tactic or something. I think it's like a, if I, if I expect the worst case scenario, then I won't be let down if it happens. Or if it's a better, then I will be happy from the, the best case scenario happening instead of the worst. But what it actually does for me is it makes the entire experience miserable. It makes it miserable from start to finish and I worry myself into stress. So my stress manifests itself physically. When I am stressed out, I get very, very ill. I throw up a lot. I, um, I get really bad headaches. I, I can feel my heart racing and it's not ever serving me. And so these last few weeks have been spent with me reevaluating that because I have been ruining myself slowly over my entire life with this constant worry. I've said this before. Um, my mom, when I was younger, used to call me a worry wart. It's like, it was like a funny thing. Like Christy, you're such a worry wart. <laughs> mom, you were right. <laughs> I've been doing it since I was a little kid. I worry about everything. I always give like the possible worst case scenario first. Okay. So if we buy this house, then, um, you know, in five years, the economy could crash and I will not have anywhere to live and it'll ruin my credit and it'll, I do that instead of being like, oh my gosh, this could be so cool. It could be so amazing. It could be the coolest experience. We could live in a really awesome place and yeah, maybe things could happen, but you know, you never know. You can't predict the future and let's just try to think of things positively. I do the literal exact opposite every single time with every scenario. I even do that overthinking thought with YouTube videos, with gardening, with going on trips, with literally everything. And I don't want to do it anymore. I've gotten to a point where it, it came to a head a couple of weeks ago. I was overthinking YouTube. What if, what if people don't like my video? What if I'm not funny enough? What if it's not good enough? I don't like that I that, that this video, I don't like this video idea. Maybe it's not because new eyes are on me, which again, it's like, a, it's, I've talked about self-sabotage in the past and I feel like I do that, but it's not even just a sabotage thing. It's like a, it's almost like a self-preservation like I was just talking about, but again, to my own detriment because what happened, I was so worried about the content that I was going to put up that instead I had a break 
down internally to where I had to take a break. So instead of further advancing my YouTube channel, instead of just posting whatever I want to post and not worrying about it, I let my own brain push me into the one of the worst places I've been in a long time mentally. I was not fucking doing okay. <laughs> um, and Zach and I had a really, really long, good conversation about this. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. I've been listening to a lot of YouTube videos. People who are just smarter than me and know more than me. Zach is really smart and he's really good at these, um, at really helping me talk down in these conversations. And he was like, you know, the brain is mean. The brain wants to overanalyze every situation and overthink everything into oblivion. And he's, cause my brain has told me, and this is, this is a fact. And I said with this video before I uploaded it, that I'm not going to hold back, that I'm just going to say what I want. Because a lot of times I feel like I worry too much about what the internet's going to think or what I'm, and I'm not going to do that because it doesn't serve me. I don't need to worry as much as I worry. <laughs> um, so my brain tells me that I don't deserve to be a YouTuber that I am not good enough for this and that other people deserve it more than me. This is all luck and it landed in my lap and that I did nothing to deserve or work for this life that I have and that other people deserve it way more than me. And that is what I now realize is a lie that I have told myself. This did not land in my lap. I did it for four years for free for the fun of it. I just did it and then it happened to turn into something incredible. Like even if someone congratulates me, if they're like, oh my God, that's awesome. You have, you know, YouTube's going well for you. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. I always discount everything that I have done because I feel like I don't deserve it. And I feel like I don't deserve the life that I've been given. And Zach and I had a really, really serious conversation the other day. And he asked me a really good question that really opened up my, my eyes to my situation. And he said, do you think that you're a good person? And I was like, yeah, I think so. And he's like, do you help people when they need it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, did you work hard to get where you are? I'm like, well, it's not like hard. He's like, no, but did you put in the effort to get where you are? And I'm like, yeah. Did you do it all yourself? Yeah. If one of your friends was in the exact same position as you, would you be happy for them? I'm like, yes, of course. He's like, so he was like, if you, if, why are you the one person in your mind that doesn't deserve it, but everyone else deserves it? And I was like, okay, I don't like this question. <laughs> My mean mind tells me that I'm, Maybe, I don't know what it is. And I've been looking into getting a therapist, okay? I'm looking into it. Nobody has been available ASAP, unless it's like an emergency situation, which I don't consider mine an emergency situation. And I don't wanna take away from the services of other people that need them in that way. In the meantime, I've been really self-reflecting and talking to people and just trying to understand maybe that I am lying to myself. I. I don't know why I have told myself that I can't be happy for what I've done or proud of things that I've done. Um, even when I accomplish something, I don't feel pride. I feel like, no, 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 I didn't, I don't, uh, I don't deserve it. I don't, I feel like that so much so that I don't recall the last time that I was like proud of myself, like ever. And I don't know why I'm like this because I don't, what, what happened in my brain to make me do that to myself? It's so mean and it's not, it doesn't serve me. So basically all of this gets to a point that I let that part of my life start dictating how I was feeling every single day. And I had to stop. I had to stop filming. I, was, I wasn't feeling creative or smart or cool or worthy of like, it's almost like one of those things where I would, every video I was uploading, I was like, you guys don't wanna watch this. Like, it's not even good. So I, I canceled everything. I canceled all of my sponsorships that I had coming up. I canceled all of the opportunities that I had coming up. And I said, I, I need a break. And I didn't wanna feel bad about it. And so that's what I've done. I took two weeks off of filming in this two weeks a big part of what I've wanted to do is, first of all, I was calling around, seeing if there was anybody available to talk to. I started l reading some books and I'm, I'm reading uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. There are some really helpful tips in there about people who hold themselves back and how to, how to get out of that. And a lot of those is setting like an accountability thing for yourself. So for me, okay, well, I procrastinate everything till the last minute. 
So what does it look like to pull yourself out of that? Well, that is setting a schedule and sticking to your schedule. So I think a big part for me was that working from home and working for myself, you are accountable to nobody but yourself. And if you yourself is anxious and stressed and over feeling overwhelmed and overthinking everything, well, yourself is not going to push you past that. Like a lot of times we like, at least for me, and I don't, I'm only speaking for myself here. At least for me, a lot of times when I'm feeling overwhelmed, instead of pushing through it and pushing you know, and finding ways around it and like finding ways to help myself, I'll be like, okay, I need to just do what feels comfortable in this moment. And so that's kind of where I've been stuck for the longest time. Like, all right, well, filming, editing, uploading same day isn't that bad. Yes, it is. It It's it's stressful. You feel like you're always on a rushed timeline. So how do we fix that? You set yourself a fucking schedule. I was actually talking to Sam about this and she was like, you need to get an agenda and you need to stick to it. You need to write down your day and stick to your agenda. And you know what? It's weird how just that small task can really make such a big difference. So set, sitting down and creating a schedule for myself and sticking to that schedule, even if you don't want to, because it doesn't matter if you don't want to, because it's your job and you need to do it, has been really helpful. When I worked in the vet, I was up at five, I was out the door at 6.45, and I was at work at 7.15, and I would work until 5.30 p.m., and then I would get home, cook dinner, watch some shows. It was a productive, full day. And what I discovered is you think that that leisure is like self-care, at least for me. Oh, you know, I'm allowing myself to take my time. and be... It's not self-care for me. What it does is that leisure, lack of structure is not serving me. I thought that the more free flowing my life is, the more carefree I would feel. But actually with me, I've discovered over the last few weeks that that structure and getting shit done is actually where I feel my accomplishment. So I was always thinking like, oh, well, it would be so amazing one day you don't have to work anymore. No, I realized that a lot of my self-worth and feelings like that does come from working. So for me, I, listen to Sam and I started writing down things in my agenda and looking at my day as, okay, you got to get this stuff done because it doesn't matter if you don't want to do it, you need to do it because if you don't do the things you don't want to do, you're never going to do anything. And that was my situation because it's not all about keeping yourself comfortable because for me, comfort is lack of change, is lack of growth. I can feel completely comfortable in my surroundings as long as nothing changes, everything stays the same, and all is well and good. The times that have been the most amazing in my life have been facing those uncomfortable moments and passing them. It's almost like um, for me, pushing myself past my comfort zones have been when I've grown as a person. But a lot of times my brain tells me like, no, don't change. You know, things are working just fine. Like stay in your comfort zone in a way. And so that's where I've been staying in my comfort zone and not wanting to feel uncomfortable or, and what that's done for me is make me anxious of change and scared of growth and fe fear of the unknown. And fear of the unknown is normal, I think, in a lot of ways because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the future is going to hold. But a lot of times we tell ourselves that, that that thing, that unknown is a scary thing, but it could also be a great thing. And that is where I was landing in my life of fear of the unknown. And I've had to start trying to shift that in my mind from fear of the unknown into excitement of the unknown. Because when I fear everything, I won't do anything. And I do let fear dominate my... Um, my day. I, I let a lot of things like, okay, well, I can't buy that house because what if one day, blah, blah, blah. I, I overthink and over talk everything from a fear perspective into the ground to where I will never change. I can just sit in my house all day long, do what I know will keep me exactly where I'm at. And while that's fine to stay where you are, I don't care what other people do. That is perfectly fine. If that's what serves you, it doesn't serve me though because it wasn't making me happy to stay where I am. It was just keeping me from being afraid. And I have, I had to start trying in any way that I could to shift my perspective from fear to excitement. Take the anxiety that I was feeling instead of making it a bad thing, make it a feeling of like this is 
this could possibly be a, a really great thing. And if it isn't, what's the worst that can happen? I had to start giving myself these talks and talking this through with like my family and my friends. And a lot of times I create the scenarios to where I won't do anything. I'll sit and I'll just overthink myself into the ground and I will never take a risk. I'm not a risk-based person. I don't know if this has to do with like me being a Capricorn. Does it sound pretty Capricorn to you? I don't know. Kathleen, you gotta let me know. But my point is, is that I'm not a risk-based person. Even with like um, investing, like we have a, we're in like, um, I have like a IRA or whatever. And they invest that into funds and mutual funds or whatever. And it's funny when they ask you like, what's your risk tolerance? Mine is the lowest. I want to put everything into very low yield bonds. I don't like risk. That's why I don't like gambling. I like to just like, I know if I don't gamble, I will still have $50. I could gamble and make it into $5,000. Or I could gamble and lose that $50 and then be like, damn it. So for me, I don't know about you guys. I'd really be interested to hear which one you are. I'm always, no matter the situation, I'm not even going to risk it. But because I don't risk things, I lose a lot of opportunities that I was really excited about. I don't um, pull the trigger on very many things that I look back on and go, ah, I really should have done that. And I don't want to be like that all the time anymore. And I still think there's a time and a place for that type of a thought process and that type of a person. But with every single move you make as a human being, for me, it was keeping me feeling afraid all the time. And I don't like that feeling. I don't like being afraid. There's no purpose to it. It wasn't helping me. And and when I was talking to people, like I, I called and I was talking to my friends and I was talking to a bunch of other people. And the thing is, is that a lot of people feel these feelings. They just can move past them and look at the other side as well. And so I've had to, a big part for me for the last couple of weeks has been really soul searching so that I can get my shit together. Quit overthinking everything. Quit taking opportunities and ruining them for myself because I've thought of them in so many negative ways beforehand. I've played it all up in my mind to a point where I've run it right into the ground and taken any fun out of the situation. Because I, I'm i I'm not a spontaneous person. I think some people are under the misconception that I, I might seem like a spontaneous ass bitch. Like I just be up to go whenever with the right kind of two and a half week planning, I can be spontaneous. But I am not a spontaneous person, never have been. And I have tried to kick myself out of that bubble these last few weeks because again, as I've said, it's not doing me any good to sit around and be afraid of everything. And I really am afraid of everything. And a lot of things, fear keeps me from doing anything. I have infertility, but that's not the reason that I don't have kids right now. I'm sure I could work past my infertility. I don't have kids because I'm too afraid to have kids. I don't have a dog because I don't have a dog because I'm afraid to get a dog. This is so weird. I always think of everything as scary. I think of everything as scary and I think of every worst case scenario and it stops me from doing anything. And so I'm going to get therapy, <laughs> I need it. Um, I don't wanna look back on my life, the one life I've been given here and think you could have done that but you were too afraid. You could have had kids but you were too afraid. And what am I afraid of? The what ifs, the unknowns, but they're not always bad. The what ifs could be, what if you have the best time of your life? What if the unknown is that you have like the kid that helps the world? What if the unknown is that you made the leap and it ended up being the leap of your life? And I wouldn't know because I say no to everything because I'm too afraid of the possibility of something bad happening. But because of my fear of something bad happening, I create that bad thing. I never do anything. Sure, I go out and I have fun sometimes. Sure, I hang out with friends. Sure, I sometimes do cool opportunities. If you only knew the amount of things I decline. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys would be so mad at me. You'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? No, I decline everything. Um, I have declined huge trip opportunities, huge probably growth opportunities. I've declined, I could decline like 99% of the sponsored content that comes my way. Um, I decline really cool things. And sometimes I don't even, so like I'll, sometimes I'll accept things and then I'll procrastinate them so much that like I am, it's almost like, it's like a self-sabotage thing. Like I'm like, you just push it off till a later date and I'm ruining it for myself. I'm making myself sound really good in this video, you guys, I know. Um, but I, I don't care how I sound because it's true. I never felt like I deserve anything, so I decline everything. I never feel like I can say yes to things because I'm too afraid to make changes because what if they go wrong? And in the last two weeks, this conversation that you and I are having right now has been on repeat in my mind and I've been having it with my husband, with my sister. The point of this video is to say, I, I just want you guys to know that I'm not like, I'm doing much better. I'm actually in a really great place because what I've done is I cleaned house. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. I have set schedules for myself to, when I have a task, do it immediately. When you start feeling anxious, go work out. When you are questioning everything, talk to your friends, talk to your husband, don't internalize, don't sit there and what if everything. And it's, it's a work in progress, obviously. Like I'm not like, I'm cured from my overthinking. Absolutely not. I'm literally overthinking this current video that I am filming, but I just wanted to say it because it's not, maybe somebody else is the same way as me. I don't know. It's a really weird predicament to be in, to be in a place where you finally have the opportunities to do the things that you've always wanted to do, but now you're too afraid to do them. Or, um, you know, I always worry about like, if I'm using my influence correctly, again, worry, worry, worry. Instead of enjoying anything, I just, I let every situation dictate my happiness instead of letting my happiness dictate that situation. And so I'm really trying my best to just take every moment as it comes and not try to overthink it. And, you know, it's really difficult for me because I have, this is like retraining my brain from a way that it's been working my literal entire life. This is not new. This is not like just since I started YouTube. I've been doing this at every job I've ever worked at, at every every friend situation I've ever had, I overthink and think they hate me. And I don't know why. Why would, why, why would they hate me? <laughs> I don't know. Because my stupid brain is mean to me. And it makes me think, what if they hate you? <laughs> well, I don't know. What if they freaking hate me? What can I do about it? Why would they hate me? Like, but I, I cannot let the mean parts of my brain determine my decisions because my brain will always take the path of least resistance. It will always do what it knows is going to keep it comfortable. And that is lack of change. That is lack of growth. And a lot of times for me and myself, if I'm not growing, I feel like I'm not doing well. And I think for a lot of us, it's that way. Like if you're not changing, you're, you're not progressing type of a thing. And that's not always the case like that. You don't like, it's okay to just be comfortable with where you're at. But for me, my comfort with where I'm at doesn't come from being fully comfortable. It comes from a fear of the change of growth because I want the growth and I want the change. I just am too afraid of it. If I quit letting fear dictate my life and my decisions, I think that things are going to be a lot better for me. And over the last couple of weeks that's been what I'm working towards and that's why I've literally gone silent on social media because I needed a moment to just get off and be with myself and with my own brain and figuring things out for myself yeah it's to a point for me where I have started to so I'm so I'm writing everything down keeping my room clean, keeping my thoughts organized. And Zach's really been helping me with like, okay, we've got tasks, let's do them. We've got this, let's do them. No more putting things off till a later time because I just don't want to right now. I'm never gonna want to. And then it piles up and then it makes me get all anxious and feel like I've waited too long and now it's not gonna... That stuff has got to go. The people I admire the most in their work ethic are people who get shit done and they don't make excuses about it. 
somebody that does that really well is Taylor, the Taylor. I have a really big respect for her as a human being, but also as a creator because she deals with chronic pain too. She uploads a very similar schedule to me. I've kind of let go of my schedule because I was letting it overwhelm me and feeling like I wasn't getting up my videos on time and like I was letting people down. For me, I look at her and I go, it can be done. You just can't get into your own head about it. You just have to get up and do it. If she wants to get a video filmed by 8 a.m., she wakes up at six o'clock in the morning. She writes it in her schedule and she just makes it a priority to get her work done so that I'm sure she can play. She goes on trips. She goes on these awesome times with her family and her friends. She doesn't let work ruin her life or dictate her life. It's just a part of her life. And it's not this impossible task. It's just planning. It's just planning. And she plans to film and plans to get work done so that in those other times, she can have off moments. She's got like sometimes a month pre-filmed. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. That's so cool. And that is so inspiring to me, knowing that it's not some impossible task that I can't do. It's that I am telling myself it's an impossible task for me. It's not. Taylor doesn't have superpowers. Well, maybe she does. Sure seems like it sometimes. But she prioritizes that. It's a part of her priority and she makes it so. And because of that, she's allowing herself to schedule in fun and free time and work when it's appropriate and not make excuses. And even when, you know, she has bad health days, those days are allotted for because she's done the work previously when she was feeling better. That is really inspiring to me. And I have the full capabilities. I'm a human with time and I can do the same things. I've just told myself, I'm Christy, the procrastinator. You can't just label yourself as that and then just be it if it doesn't serve you or make you happy. And it doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make me feel good. And I don't like that trait about myself. And it's a perfectly easy trait to change. I just was telling myself, well, well, that's, that's what I do. I procrastinate. Well, you don't have to. So you don't have to. And now I'm not. And this video is being pre-filmed days in advance. And so will tomorrow's video that I film. You know, and I'm not even going to say hopefully because saying I'm going to try is already implying the possibility of failure. And if I allow myself to just try to do better, that is already saying that if I fail, it's okay. And it's not okay because I know what that does for me. I'm speaking about myself here only. I know how I feel internally and what I can do to change these things. I'm really excited about it actually because I feel like the better I get my head screwed on right, I can stop being afraid of the things that I've been holding back on forever. That's why you don't see me at a lot of things. That's why you don't see me out and about. That's why you don't, you know, see me in Australia. I turned that trip down. You don't see me in Ibiza. I turned that trip down. I turn things down because I'm too afraid. And a lot of times that I have worked through those things, like when I did end up going to Generation Beauty because I was afraid to go, and then you guys were like, Christy, go, you're not gonna regret it. And I went and I didn't regret it. That was one of those scenarios where when I pushed through my fears, it made me a stronger person on the other side. And it's really easy to fall back into old habits of being like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, you know, fall back into like my comfort zone and what I know is going to be fine. But I do regret declining so many things. And I have made a couple of moves forward in the last few weeks that are things I wouldn't normally do. And I'm trying to just say my direct thoughts without worry of like hurting people's feelings or without worry of repercussion. Like obviously I'm not making poor decisions, but I am allowing myself to do things outside of my comfort zone. And it is really rough, but the more I talk through it with people and the more I go through it and the more I realize that this is the one life I've been given here on this earth. This is my time. This is my earth moment. My friend Marie was talking about that. She's like, this is your earth experience and don't stifle it because of your fears. Like this is your one earth experience and you need to just like live it. And that's the thing is I don't live my life with conviction. I live it through fear. And so if I start living like I want to, but I'm too afraid to, then maybe I think I'll push myself out of this bubble that I've been stuck in. And I 
think that therapy is really going to help me through like the fear of having kids because a lot of my fears stem from like, well, what happens? What if the kid gets sick? What if something hurt happens to it? What if it has a problem and it's my fault? What if it's, I, I do all of that stuff? What if, what if we buy this house, but then the kid wants to play in the backyard and there is no backyard because we bought a house on the top of a mountain and we do this. All of those things that I just said are actual real fears that I have thought. What if my kid goes to school and then gets hurt or somebody's mean to it or it, it, it resents me. Those are all possible things that could happen, but they're all possible things that could not happen. And some Sometimes, and I've talked to you guys about this in the past, and this is me telling myself as well as telling you, I have thought of things like, okay, so the other day Avery came over here and I was having a really bad cluster headache day and Avery came over and I didn't get to see her. And she was downstairs and she spent the evening with Zach. And then when she left, I sobbed my face off because I thought, what if something bad happens to her? And this would have been the last time I saw her and I was upstairs with a headache and I didn't get to see her. Do you know how much pain and stress I put myself through unnecessarily? I had like a moment where I thought, what if that was the last time and I missed it? I didn't get to see her because of my headache. What good did that do me? She's fine. She's fine. I saw her a couple days later. It was perfectly fine. She didn't even remember that she hadn't seen me when she was here. She's a little kid. Why did I put myself through that? Why did I what if every single scenario of that to be the scariest, most horrible? Why is that even a thought in your head? Because again, I let fear drive my emotions and I do that with everything. I think of the worst case scenario. Okay, well, Zach's gonna leave and he's gonna get me a battery for this microphone. And if he ends up getting in a car accident on the way, it's my fault because I didn't go get the battery. And a lot of times I've just been like, no, no, I'll just go get it. Because that's an actual thought in my mind. And that's why I need help. I need help because that scenario that I just explained to you is not rare. It is not something I so rarely do. It is something I do with everything, always. And it doesn't help me anymore. It doesn't make me better. It makes me completely stop doing anything because what if something bad happens? What if something fucking bad happens? Well, then you weren't gonna stop it. Life happens the way it happens. And if something bad happens, deal with it when it happens. But instead of thinking maybe it'll happen, because me, if Avery did get hurt, I made myself suffer unnecessarily for no reason. Um, something bad isn't always going to happen. I thought that the plane was going to crash when we were on the way back from Hawaii because there was a bit of turbulence. It didn't. I replayed that whole scenario the whole time. I was like, this is where we die. This is how I go down. This is it. This is gonna be the moment. This is gonna be when people are like, she went on a trip to Hawaii and she never made it home. Those are my thoughts and it's so unhealthy and I'm sharing this with you because I'm acknowledging that I am going to make changes. I am hoping that I can find somebody that can help me talk through this unnecessary anxiety and stress and weirdness that I go through. I don't know what spawned this. There's a lot of things in my past that could have really been that way. And I don't do this all day long. Like the majority of my days, I'm just living my life and I'm just doing things. But because some big decisions have come up over the last couple of weeks, that's what started this. Now, things I don't talk about on YouTube, things I don't discuss because I don't discuss like personal, huge, big decisions usually that are happening behind the scenes and like, you know, business opportunities and stuff. And when I'm comfortable and when I'm just doing my thing, again, without that growth potential, that's why things have seemingly been fine. Yeah, sometimes I go through these ebbs and flows, but I haven't had any of these big, like life-changing opportunities come to me. But in this last two weeks, I have. I have had a couple. And that's why I had to take a break because I started overthinking everything and it started to become a problem. The majority of my life in these moments, I just allow myself to sit and be comfortable and do my day-to-day -day routine that I know how it works. I know how waking up in the morning, drinking my coffee, checking on my garden, feeding my cats, coming and filming YouTube videos, editing the YouTube videos, posting them, watching the office, going to bed. I know how that day works and it works. It works just fine. It keeps me where I'm at. Things have been going good. But like most people who want different things or who want to grow or who want to try anything or buy a new house or all those different things, where those become exciting, they, they became a little overwhelming for me. And that's why I had to take a moment and deal with my stuff behind the scenes, get my life right. Sam has been really helpful to help me talk through this. She gave me a huge talk. She's just wonderful because she does see a therapist. And then she was giving me a little bit of therapist help. <laughs> and you know what? It is really helpful stuff. Same with my friends, Marie and Kat. They're both really level-headed, amazing women. My husband is wonderful. My sister, my family, everybody's just been so helpful and supportive and wonderful. And um, I'm really looking forward to sitting down and having a 
moment talking to a therapist and getting to the root reasons of why I may do the things I do and ways that I can move past them. Trust me, I know. I've I've had a couple of comments of people being like, you know, you should see a therapist. And initially when you're going through stuff, the last thing you want to do is go seek somebody out to go talk to them because when you're going through it, you're like, ah, I just want to be left alone because it's like the last thing I want to do. It's what I know I'm going to do and what I need to do. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to pushing myself to do things that I don't wanna do because those are gonna be things, the things that help me grow as a human being. Um, being kind with myself in the process as well because obviously it's not an overnight thing. I'm not gonna change everything about my mental state in two weeks, obviously, but I am pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I'm doing things that I want to do that I, I'm trying to turn that anxiety into excitement and not overthink everything and also realize that if something bad does happen, it's unforeseeable and things happen and life is like that sometimes. It be like that sometimes, as they say. I think the Jacqueline Hill video and how much many eyes were on me during that was overwhelming for me. Some people might be like, fuck yeah, so many people. And I was like, ah. And while I embrace the growth, I also fear the growth. <laughs> and I think that what I'm experiencing is I never have addressed a lot of the things in my life that I feel like I always let roll off like, oh yeah, it was awful, but it didn't affect me that deeply. Um, yeah, I think it did. <laughs> I'm hopeful for the future and I'm gonna stop trying to overthink everything and I'm going to try to get to the root cause of why this has been happening. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is resume filming YouTube videos, come back and work hard and not procrastinate. Those are some of my goals. I have already been working on all of those things. I've sorted all of my makeup. I've got everything into categories and I've got my list and every day I'm gonna check things off my list. I've got video ideas. Zach's gonna help me with everything and it's gonna be good and I'm going to make it be so because instead of trying to overthink everything, I'm just gonna to try to do it. And you know, maybe I'll fail along the way. Things change and sometimes I feel like when you say something online, you're held to that standard and, and that is the case. Like when you say something, people will always remember what you said and be like, but you said, I, I know. You know, things change, people change and I'm just trying to grow as a person and it is hard to do in the public eye because you do feel scrutinized and I don't know if people are gonna watch this video and be like, damn, this bitch. <laughs> or if it could resonate with some of you. I think a lot of us overthink everything and I've been looking into it a lot and reading a lot of books and articles and things about overthinking and I think a lot of people do it. It's like a chronic problem. I don't want to let that part of me be a part of my identity. And other people may not be that way, but I don't want to let that just be who I am and just accept that it is that way and then feel miserable because I feel like I'm not like fulfilling my life's destiny because I'm too afraid. That's why I wanna work on it and change it and make these videos and talk to you guys about it because maybe you can relate, maybe you can't. Maybe it's like, I'm the opposite of that. If you guys have any helpful tips, I would love to hear them. It's just one of those things that, you know, it takes the right kind of situation to get you into it and it takes maybe the right kind of momentum to push you into it and for me that was feeling like an overwhelming sense of too much with good things like good things are happening behind the scenes that's not even the case exciting things are happening all of the things that I said overwhelmed me were good things but because that meant change that meant to me change is bad change is bad that's scary that's unknown cancel it and I did, and I allowed myself to cancel a lot of really good things, and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't I don't need to self-sabotage myself. I don't need to do that. I I am a good person and I deserve happiness. And saying that doesn't make me a cocky bitch. <laughs> saying that doesn't make me a bad person. I need to not just say, I need to know it. You know, I'm not even gonna apologize for this long video. This is a long video. It's so rambly, it's so all over the place. I know that and I'm fine with that because I've always tried to keep it completely honest on my YouTube channel. I've always said what I feel when I feel it. If I'm feeling overwhelmed, if I'm feeling like things are going too crazy, if I feel like going through a really bad bout of anxiety or if I'm having, or I'm really happy or if there's something amazing going on or if I'm talking about feelings about what I wanna do in my future, I've always shared that. And I think a lot of times I am an oversharer, but that's because I feel, and I, I actually talked about this on the podcast. I was on the Approachable podcast, which is Sam and Alyssa's podcast, which that, podcast I talked about why I share about chronic pain and things because I feel 
like even if it can reach one person. And I, I know that sounds silly. Like sometimes when you hear people say that, you're like, oh yeah, you're doing it for the one person. Not necessarily, but if it could be relatable to one person. Sometimes other people say things online that they're a little nervous to talk about, but I'm so glad they shared them because I'm like, oh my God, I feel the same way. This could be that for somebody. Maybe it's not. That's why I share about my chronic pain, not because I'm trying to complain, but because I'm trying to be the open person that I always wish other people were. Because sometimes when you hear about other people's behind the scenes, you're like, oh my God, I didn't know you thought that way. I just thought you had all your shit together. And I see people like that all the time. And no, I we all don't. Now, in many ways, I do have my shit together. I feel like in a lot of ways I excel and there's a lot of things I really like to do and I'm good at and I think about in a really healthy way. And then there's things that I obviously don't think about in a healthy way. That's why I continue to share things, even if it does seem like an overshare at times, because Maybe somebody else is feeling this way and needed to hear it today. Maybe they didn't, I don't know. But all I know is that with talking about my chronic pain, I've had a couple of people say like, hey, you've helped my boyfriend get diagnosed with cluster headaches because he knew what signs to look out for. Or, oh, that treatment that you tried was the one thing that worked. That to me is invaluable. If I can help people, oh my God, let me help. And I have been helped by other people online by sharing their struggles. And I think that at times it can be really nice to know that if you're an overthinker or if you are a worrier or if you're scared of literally everything like I am, that you are not alone and that you are valid in those feelings and that we maybe can get help together. If you don't like the way that you feel, maybe we can try and find a way around it. That's why I share. Sometimes I'm an oversharer, sure. I just don't care. I don't want to not share something because I'm nervous that I'm oversharing that could have maybe helped somebody else or could have maybe made somebody's eyes open to like, oh, I never thought about it that way before. Or maybe I do those same things. For me, this is who I am. I'm a worry wart. I have been and I don't want to be anymore. And I have the capabilities of changing that, whether it be through therapy, whether it be through medication, I don't know what I'm going to need. All I know is that I feel that if I talk about it enough and if I change my behavior enough and if I work towards an ultimate goal of being better in the thing that I feel like is a fault of mine that I want to change, I can change those things. I think that a lot of us are capable. As long as we recognize that we have the ability to try to see things from a different perspective, then I think that's all we can do. That's all I wanna do is I wanna just be be straight up honest and I just want to say what's going on because I've been here doing this for so long and I love doing it and I look back on the memories that I shared and the feelings I was going through and seeing the growth from you know four years ago when I was scared to do XYZ or when I was trying to have kids 10 years ago and I went through five years of infertility treatment and I was going to doctors and I was going to reproductive endocrinologists every month. What happened to her was she wasn't afraid of having kids, but why am I now? So I like to see that transition. I like to see that either growth or maybe it's not growth. Maybe it's like, hey, what happened in between this time frame that maybe made you change your entire perspective on having kids? I don't know. But that's to me why I share because I was that person and things have shifted so much in my life and now things are so different. It can do the same in the opposite direction. So maybe I'll look back on this in a year and be like, wow, I was so afraid to do that. And look, I did it. And that's how I look back on that video where I was afraid to go to Generation Beauty because I look back on that and I can't even fathom being afraid of going to a Generation Beauty. Like, what was I afraid of? But I faced my fear and I did it. And a lot of times when I have done those things, it has helped me immensely. Like, I didn't want to go on the zip lines in Hawaii because I'm very afraid of heights, so I went on the zip lines. I am very afraid of heights, so I went in a hot air balloon. Sometimes I purposefully try to face my fears because, again, I do discover that most of the time they end up being just fine. <laughs> and that's in my situation. You know, bad things can happen, but I cannot prepare for every bad thing that's ever going to happen or I'm not gonna live my life now. And that's where I've been and I don't wanna do that anymore. And the last few weeks have really taught me that I don't have to be like that. I am not allowing myself to fall into the person that I feel like my brain is telling me to be. And it's scary, but it's exciting to know that I could push past this feeling and hopefully come out on the other side happy. Proud of myself for doing that. That's I think where I'm gonna stop this video. I know this was really weird and all over the place, but I had to just say it. And even if it made no sense, even if it was all over the place and you're like, bitch, what the fuck? And I'm like, I know. And then you're like, but no, really. And I'm like, no, I know. Um, That's fine. 
I don't care because it is what it is. And I have appreciated when other YouTubers that I follow talk about anxiety and talk about stress and over worrying and things like that because I feel like I'm not alone in that and that I've seen other people come out on top and I'm like, okay, we can come out on top. I love you guys and I'm so sorry for the length of time I was gone. No, I'm not, I'm not sorry, actually. <laughs> I'm actually very thankful that I have the ability to take two weeks off when I need it. Thank you for allowing that to be the case for me and for not hounding me. I've had a couple people be little dickheads about it, but you know, it's okay. And I thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I'm ready to go back to filming and getting my shit all sorted out. And there may be bumps along the road. There may be things that happen where you're like, Christy, don't do not I know. Um, there will be mistakes made along the way. And I am just going to consciously make an effort to drink a lot of water exercise on top of all of that, eating healthy, getting all of that stuff situated, which is never a bad thing, staying on top of my agenda, getting therapy, and allowing myself to feel the things I feel, but also like evaluate them and let them move past and try to like step myself out of my comfort zone because a lot of the times when I have done that, it has been amazing. Actually, almost every time that I didn't wanna do something and I did it and ended up being amazing. All right, well, I thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, love you guys so much. And I thank you guys so much for all your kind words and um, just for, you know, being there. It's really, really nice to know that even after the length of time I've been doing this and just the amount of shifts and transition that some of you guys are still here from the beginning, like from my first house sitting in my attic with a burlap background talking about eyeshadows. Like that to me is, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy cool. I love you guys so much and I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video.